Gemara Masechet Rosh Hashanah, page 17a, says, depends what level of Geinom a person is in. If they, there are seven levels of Geinom, the Rashid Chokhmah, which I actually have with me for anyone that wants to look at it, so they don't think I'm making this stuff up, the Rashid Chokhmah gives detailed ex, uh, explanations of what happens in every one of the Madorot, every one of the chambers in Geinom. It also tells what kind of sins you do in order to get into a certain chamber. For example, right over here, the Mador Revi'i Nikratita Yavin, the fourth chamber of Geinom, and just, Baruch Hashem, it happens to be open. The fourth chamber of Geinom is called Tita Yavin. And there, they uh, put people that have uh, arrogance, people that are arrogant, people that make fun of poor people, people that shame poor people, people that uh, waste seed unintentionally, and also people that go with goyot. Guys that go with goyot, that's uh, the, the place for them is the fourth level of Geinom. And there's other things. Fifth level, for example, calls Shaol. Shaol. The fifth level is called Shaol. Over there, they put people that are Muslim. If you go call the cops on a Jew, call the IRS on a Jew, you have a serious problem, you call the Mosel. If you tell people to donate money to a church, you call the Mosel. If Apikos, Apikos is someone that's a heretic. A uh, Kofel, also a different type of heretic. Someone that's even a Kofel in Tchayat Amitim. They don't believe in uh, resurrection of the dead. Also, they go to the fifth level. And so on and so forth. The Gemara says in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, the first six levels have a certain amount of time frame. Different sins, different sentence. Sin, let's say, A has one year. Sins B has two years. Sin C has ten years, and so on and so forth. So the Gemara says certain people go and have to pay only for one year, only for two years, only for a thousand years, and so on and so forth. But when the Mashiach comes, when the Mashiach comes, they'll be taken out, they'll join the rest of Am Yisrael at Sadiqim, and they'll have an eternity of good. But there's a seventh level. The seventh level of Genom, anyone that enters does not leave. They go in there and they never leave. Gemara says, even after Mashiach comes, even after Tchiat Metim, even after the end of this world, it's an eternity of Genom until the Neshama is officially destroyed, which could be millions and millions of years. And the sins that a person does in order to get to the seventh level of Genom, Rabotai Karim, are so easy to make, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. How people are mamash putting themselves in eternity of Genom with a simple sin. One of those sins is Chilul Shabbat. Someone that violates Shabbat on purpose and does not do tshuva dies. Without doing tshuva for Chilul Shabbat, meaning they live their life as a Mechalel Shabbat or Mechalel Shabbat, they go into the seventh level of Genom and do not end. Mashiach, no Mashiach, resurrection of the dead, all that stuff doesn't matter, apply to them. Second type of sin, it says over here, Amar sheyesh makom begenom v'u nikrat soar o tachat. The Semador HaShvi'i, Tachtit Haaretz, Someone who goes into it, the seventh level, it's called Tachtit Aaretz. Someone that goes into it does not come out. And it says that there there's different parts of it. One of it is boiling feces. Another part is boiling seed. Other is different types of fire. Hashem Echem. One person is a Mechalel Shabbat that goes in there. Dies a Mechalel Shabbat. You didn't do tshuva. If you did tshuva, they don't have to worry about it. But if they didn't do tshuva, they have a very, very serious, permanent problem. Second is someone that's wasting seed, lechatchila, meaning they waste seed on purpose. Like unfortunately, many guys today, young and old, they're addicted to it. They do it sometimes daily, sometimes multiple times daily, sometimes a few times a week. You die without doing tshuva for wasting seed, my friend. Doesn't matter if you kept Shabbat. Genom starts and doesn't end for you. Rabotai, it's not a joke. You learn about Geinom. When I learned about it, I started crying. It's not a place you want anyone in there, including yourself or anyone you love. 
wasting seed is a serious crime against Hashem. Next one, it says, someone's a machtia rabin. Someone that causes other people to sin. A woman that walks around imadist, she causes guys to sin. They end up wasting seed because of her. What do you think? She goes away free while he's in jail forever? No, my friends. A woman that walks around imadist that causes other men to sin, she's considered machtia rabin. Hashem yirachem aleinu. This could be our sisters. This could be our daughters, Hashem yirachem. This could be people that we know. This could be our mothers that causes men to sin. That means Rabotai Karim, it's not, it's not, there's no free lunch. There's no free lunch, meaning that a woman needs to take on modesty. Why? You don't want to go with such a crime in Shemaim. I know it seems hard to be modest in this world because everybody else is immodest. I know it seems like it's hot and therefore if you're going to put more layers or at least longer clothes, it's going to be unbearable. But I promise you, it's not that hard and I promise you it's not hotter when you wear longer sleeves. In fact, many times it's hotter when you wear shorter, shorter sleeves. Same thing with guys. Guys that don't take advantage of the mitzvah of tzitzit because they think it's too hot. You're wasting a big opportunity to make a mitzvah and every second you're going to need that mitzvah. You're going to need that mitzvah to protect you. So, guy that could uh, have the excuse, oh no, I'm not wearing tzitzit because it's too hot. When you wear tzitzit, you're actually less hot. And the reason why is because you have layers. When you have layers, you'll have actually less heat. You'll have more wind coming into your body. I promise you it's not more hot with, uh, with tzitzit. It's the opposite. Just your Yetzirah telling you. So the point being, Abutai, is that if a person goes to the first six levels of Geinom, for whatever sins they've committed, there is a punishment. It's a very serious punishment, which you could learn from Ishiu about Geinom. I didn't even go into all the details, but I went into enough details to scare the lights out of everybody, including myself. But it ends at some point. It could be a month. It could be 5,000 years. It could be 5 million years, but at some point it ends. Remember, time over there is not like time over here. So even if Mashiach comes, it doesn't mean that the person, let's say Mashiach comes next year. It doesn't mean that a person that goes to Geinom tomorrow is only going to be in Geinom for one year. doesn't mean that. There's no time over there. Meaning that Mashiach can come next year, but that person went to Geinom for 50,000 years. Why? Because there's no time there. So yeah, here it's a year. Over there it could be 50,000 years. One of the places we learn in the Torah, one of the places we learn in the Torah that time is different over there, is this week's parasha. This week's parasha, parasha Tzlach. One of the Kadosh Baruch Hu says to Am Yisrael, he says, you said something against the land and said Lashon Ara about the land, after going there for 40 years, for 40 days, for every one of your days, I'm going to count a year. Punishment, 40-year punishment. 40 days trip, one second actual sin, 40-year punishment. No one from that generation entered uh, Eretz Israel. Here we already see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's time span, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's clock is very different than us. One second sin could be uh, centuries of punishment. Point being, we have to do tshuva. Little by little, you'll do more. Little by little, you'll get better. And you'll see that this is the best thing you've ever done for yourself. Not just in the next world, but also in, the ne- and in this one. In this one. So if a person goes to the first six, it ends at some point. But that's not necessarily good news. It just means it ends at some point. But if they go into the seventh place because of or Shabbat, these three major crimes. There's a few others, by the way, as well. But those are three most common. Then they have a permanent problem because they'll enter Geinom Hashem and they will not leave. And it's not going to be fun.